Hey everybody, uh, I'm going to show you a quick tip here in Blender and uh, actually even though it's a quick and easy tip, this has helped me out immeasurably in doing uh, especially character animation, but any kind of complex animation, especially if you're using the dope sheet. So uh, this is the Widowmaker animation test I did recently and uh, when I first did this, you know, it was just a sea of keyframes and it was really hard to tell what the heck was going on. But if you see down here, down at the bottom, there's a little drop down and it says new keyframe type. So you can choose extreme, moving hole, breakdown, uh, keyframe jitter, all that kind of stuff. And what it does is it colors the keyframes differently depending on the type of keyframe you want it to be. So your extreme keyframe or your main keyframes, I have them a certain color. The in-between or breakdown keyframes, as you can see here, are blue in my case. And my moving holds, I've set to white. You can change the uh, colors if you go to File and User Preferences, go to Themes, and click on the Dope Sheet tab, you can select the color for each one here, all right? Uh, now the purpose of this is, now you can see if I go ahead and select all the keys and then go to Key and then Keyframe Type and then just set it all to Keyframe, you'll see why we wanna set these keyframe types because as you can see here, it's really just a mess of keys and it looks like just nothing. So uh, if we go ahead and undo all that, you can see that, uh, there we go. Uh, now I can tell what's going on. I can see that, okay, this is a keyframe, and then this is a moving hold, and then there's a little bit of an in-between. Uh, another thing we can do here, which helps you out, which you can use, use for just about any kind of animation, is in the Dope Sheet and the Sequence Editor, you can go ahead and, and select Markers. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and M, and then Control M to rename it, and I'll say Step Forward. So now I have a marker that shows me in the timeline what's happening. So here, when she goes to turn uh, backwards here, I'll say M and Control M, and I'll be, say Begin Turn. Okay, so with the markers and the keyframe types, you can go ahead and organize your dope sheet and your layout and everything in a way you can see that they also show up down here in the little timeline window as well. So you can... Organize everything in such a way that to help yourself so that you know what the heck is going on in your animation just by looking at the keyframe types. Uh, you can change them, as I showed you before, you can go ahead and band select a bunch of keys and then you could either uh, go into the, the key uh, menu and then go to keyframe type and change them there or you can hit R and a little pop-up window opens and then you can hit uh, choose the type that you want there. All right. Uh, that's when, that's how you, uh, you do that. Or of course, like I said, when you're setting them, you can choose them here. I go ahead and set just my, all my, uh, my extreme keyframes. Uh, then I go ahead and start doing my moving holds and blocking in my other stuff. That's when I change the keyframe type. Now, uh, one thing I have to say is if you see here, for example, if you know about like breakdowns and moving holds in other animation, uh, you know, software or in the 2D animation world or whatever, the these types of keyframes here, the, all they do is color the keyframes and organize the, the keyframes. They don't do anything. They're just normal keyframes. If I were to open up the graph editor, I don't really want to do it because it's going to be a bunch of spaghetti here, but uh, they don't, as you can see here in the graph editor, the, the keys don't, oh, that's for the camera. Uh, I could choose a uh, something that's keyable here. So you can see here the keys, There, there's nothing different about them in the actual graph editor here. All right, so if you go into Maya, for example, uh, you see in, in Maya here, I have this little animation of a ball arcing. And so this, and let's go ahead and select this keyframe in the middle here, this number 15 keyframe. And I'll right click. Now, uh, down here where it says key, uh, you, get, you can't see it's falling off the screen here, but uh, it says key and it says convert to breakdown. So I'm gonna select that and now it turns green. So now when I open the animation editor, the graph editor, <clears throat> I'll show you the difference between the way other animation software handles a breakdown key. So if I were to select, for example, the end keys here and start moving them, you'll see that the breakdown key always retains its uh, relative uh, spacing to the other keys that it was when it was made. So in this case, that key was made right in the middle of the animation. So no matter where I stretch this animation to, it will always keep itself in the middle. 
So no matter you know how much I, I retime this, it will always keep itself right in the middle. All right. So if I were to move this key to you know towards the beginning of the animation, no matter where I move this to, it will always keep itself towards the beginning of the animation relative to where it was placed. All right. If that makes sense. Uh, the key uh, breakdown keys in Blender unfortunately don't do that. They just are just keys, and the use of the um, the use of this uh, methodology of setting these keyframe types is merely for your convenience and for your organizational sake. Uh, maybe they'll add that feature in upcoming release. Uh, anyway, uh, this tip has really helped me out. I hope it helps you out. Uh, talk to you later. Bye.